Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Here we are, Flower School Live. Double dipping. We're on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, hello to you. Susie's with you. Carolyn's with you. If you're on Facebook, you've got Caledonia and you've got Michelle. The whole Tulip team is here to join you. Thanks for being here. This weekly collaboration is so grand. You may notice that the set is a little bit different. There's no coffee cup here and no coffee pot. It's because it is hot. Did we hit 100 degrees today? I think maybe it 90? was 97 when I came in at noon. So at noon it was 97. Can you believe it? So instead, I have iced coffee today. I am still being caffeinated. I can promise you of that. But we don't have the hot coffee today. Yeah. Today we're going to be doing just the cold. So hopefully it's not quite so hot where you are, that you've enjoyed your day, that you've had a fun week to point. You made it to hump day. How much better could it be? Again, thanks to the Tulip team for being here. Caledonia, Susie, Michelle, and Carolyn. And yes, David's on the console, helping make sure that technology stays going. You have audio right now. We have a little bit of trouble with the video. But okay. It'll be very shortly. So guys, I understand the video is not showing. Jeff's working on it right now. So I don't know if it's across the board on Facebook and YouTube. So we have audio at the moment. So we can hear, so guys know that we're aware and we'll be getting this done here pretty quickly. Are we back under control? We're back under Yay! control. Yay! Oh my gosh, technology, don't you hate it? You know, it is the best thing in the world and the absolute worst thing in the world. I just can't hardly stand it. Oh my gosh. Time to introduce yourself. Take a moment, let people know where you're from. Put your tulip in there if you're part of the tribe. We have so many new tribe members that's very exciting. I want to do a shout out. Michelle, can you hold my sign up? Because I can't even do it without the sign. These are all the people that joined us last week. Elizabeth, Wendy, Sandra, Donna, Talia, Rose, Linda, Amy, Tammy. It keeps going. I didn't stop yet. Marianne, Kelly, Catherine, Michelle, Tamara. And guess what? There's more. Erica, Julie, Teresa, and Carolyn. Welcome to Flower School. I haven't even gotten all the Welcome to Flower Schools done because I was running out of pictures and running out of time and we just wanted to get you guys started. Many of you are advanced students, which is pretty fab. Some of you are beginning students. Some are online and some are in the classroom. We only have four spots left for class starting on July 8th. So if you're thinking about joining us for that, only four left. Kind of exciting. Summer school is the best time. We're going to be talking about flower school, floral design, and what that all means today. Flower wise, we've got some mini hydrangeas, green trip dianthus. Don't you love them? It's kind of like moss on a stick. How cool is that? Green trip dianthus. Then we've got some cymbidiums. Truly exotic and fabulous. That green color is so soft, so, I kind of call it pistachio. It's a great color combination with the greens. Then we've got roses, of course. It is the Rose Festival and we are the Rose City. Some beautiful carnations, spray roses, Alstromeria and Dusty Miller. Speaking of Rose Festival and the Rose City, we just had our Grand Floral Parade, and it was so much fun. David, can you show the picture of the tulip team, or the tribe, the students that were helping make the flowers? So we had a class in that had the excellent opportunity of doing flowers for the princesses. And the princess program is really fabulous because there's 15 girls that participate, and every single one of them gets a 15, no, excuse me, a $3,500 scholarship. How cool is that? So a $3,500 scholarship to put towards their education and this group helped. So did you show both pictures? Okay, now this one is the one with the bouquets maybe? Which one is it? Okay, so they are doing the, the princess wave and they're practicing holding the princess bouquets. We were having way too much fun that day. Then the other thing they got to do is the flowers for the princesses on the float. So why don't you show the float picture? 
Now, we had teachers at the parade that were working on the floats. So Anna and Michelle were both there. Then we had several graduates. Gala was there, Kate was there, and there were just so many people. It was like, I can't remember all the names. I think there were about a dozen of them out working on the floats. And then our class did the bouquets. So you can see the float going through the building and the princess is on there holding their bouquets. And then you know, there's another picture that's not quite so good that shows them on the parade route. Nope, okay, so we've just got the one. So thanks to the Tulip Tribe for doing that. So bring it back to me now. Well, you want to see the, print, the queen first? Oh, we've got the queen too. That was the other picture. So we did the presentation bouquet for the queen, which was two dozen red roses. So Queen Maya was done with the coronation on Saturday morning at 920. And at 10 o'clock, the float took off with her as the queen and the 14 princesses. It was pretty fabulous. I'm looking forward to doing it again next year. It's quite the opportunity. So let's go ahead and get started with some flowering. So we talked about the fact that we were doing old school, new school, and no school. Because the world of flowers is changing. And we could talk about no school. Let's start there. So when you go to maybe the grocery store and you pick up a mixed bouquet, Maybe you go to the farmer's market. Maybe you grow some things in your own yard. But you gather up flowers, and you get this little cluster of things. So maybe the carnations, the alstroemerian, the roses. And you think, oh, wow, I have flowers. I'm going to put them in my house. How cool is that? And you take them home, and you go, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to cut them. And you drop them in your vase. And that's what you get. That's kind of no school. Have you all done that? We all done it at some point. Be honest. You know you've done it too. And they go, okay, well, I'll lean it this way. Okay, well, I'll lean it that way. And it's still ugly. And you go, oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? So then you go, well, I'll just cut it down some more. And it's like, oh, man. Have you had those days? So there's your no school. And that's why you need to go to flower school, because no school, the flowers are pretty, but that's certainly not an arrangement. Is it centered? No. Does it have the elements and principles? No. So yeah, we're doing live, and Leanne just made a no school arrangement. Do I get lots of love for that? I should be getting lots of love, because this is kind of embarrassing to put this together on live in front of you, each and every one of you. If you kind of think I'm crazy, you're right. So we'll move that one aside. So there's our no school. Then we went to old school. And old school was where everything had to have an odd number. Everything had to have floral foam. And floral foam would come way up over the container. Remember doing that? Yeah, we've all done that. Does that make you think about 1970, 1980, with the foam way up over, lots and lots of it? And then you would have to have an odd number of flowers. So you might do three or you might do five, but you could never do two. Two was forbidden. And you weren't supposed to do one. That would be pretty awful. So we would grab our flowers, and then we did mostly mass flowers. Not a lot of form. So you might do three carnations, maybe do three roses, maybe three alstroemeria. So you always did triangles. Remember that? Old school was you had to do odd numbers. You had to work monochromatic, meaning all one color. Tints, tones, and shades of one color, monochromatic. How many times have you made that type of a design? Over and over and over. Before I get started on that one, Michelle, Carolyn, what's going on out there? Therese from Sweden has joined us again this week. Hey, Therese, glad you're here. You're on YouTube, because I don't think you're on Facebook, so no, yay. She's on YouTube. On YouTube, excellent. So, Therese, have you started your studies? Because you signed up for basic floral design. You were one of the 10 that got the special bonus, so congratulations. What else is happening? 
Well, we, we're getting some weather reports to match our hot Portland weather. Uh, Wendy said it's 102 and humid in Vegas. Oh my goodness, 102, that's crazy. And Julie said it's wet, cold, and windy in the UK. Wet, cold, and windy. I love it. Some of you may have seen the live stream that I did from the parade site on Saturday morning with the parade floats, and it was kind of overcast. It never did rain, but it was cloudy and gray, and many of the people from the UK were saying, oh, your weather looks the same as ours, and yeah, it was cloudy and gray. So what else is going on? Bega just chimed in. Hey, Bega. Glad to hear you're here. I'm hoping one of these days I get to meet you in the States, or maybe I'll come to Iceland. Who knows? One of these days we'll cross paths. So I'm going to go ahead and start old school. And with old school, you always started with one thing straight up in the back center. Remember that? That was what we always did. And then you might come out and you do a perfect triangle. And then come out and fill in. Maybe do down a little more. There we go. Now, if you're looking at that saying, well, that's not old school. That's what I do every day. That's correct. Just because it's old school doesn't mean it's wrong. It means it's classic design. And how often do you need a classic arrangement where it's a triangle? You might do a little more updated with different flowers, but the design form, the elements and principles in the old school can be just as beautiful. The difference is in the new school, it doesn't have to be an odd number. You don't have to do three of something. So I could say old school, I've got to do one, two, three. New school, I might do two and then two more down on the bottom I'm giving you four which is an odd number again or an even number again bad but it's going to be good so we've got old school new school let's go ahead and get this started here bringing in one rose sticking with the classic and then coming in with a second Teacher Beth is joining us today. Hey, Teacher Beth. I got to have lunch with Teacher Beth last week. That was so much fun. So those of you that have been in the classroom and know Teacher Beth, do a shout out. Show her a little bit of love because Teacher Beth has been vacationing in Idaho and doesn't have the internet always when she's there. So when she's back in town, she gets to join us. So glad you're here, Beth. It's good to see you last week and look forward to seeing you again. So welcome. So I've got two up, even number, doing an old school design but with new school techniques. And I'm going to come on down to the bottom. And those of you that have been in advanced class, you can start thinking about the Fibonacci sequence and the spacing. Bring it all the way down to the bottom so I'm closer at the top, further apart down on the bottom. And then shadowing, another technique from advanced studies so that I come out to the front with the first one shadowed underneath. So you can see how it groups two and two. What else is going on out there? Well, you know, you do have quite the crowd today. I lost track of the countries and the states, but there's a lot of people watching. Okay, well, I'm glad there's a lot of people watching. How fun is that? So if you have not introduced yourself to your tribe, make sure you go in. Put your name, where you're from, let them know you're part of the Tulip Tribe so you can all get to know each other. It's always amazing to me how some of you are in the exact same city and you'll get to know that just through the lives. I'm going to turn this around so you can see the back side. Notice how flat, notice how boring. I always want to bring something to the back side to finish it off so that it's not flat and boring. See how that just carries your eye on down? Then going from the front, pulls your eye to the back. So we've got classic design, bringing in the elements and principles. We're going to start with 
the elements. And there's five elements. And I'll let you know one of them is color. And the color that I'm working with is monochromatic. What are the other four? Michelle, Carolyn, see who gets it first. We need four more elements. And then we'll see who gets that one. Well, we have a lot of graduates and current students on right now. Karen, Sherry, Jean, Anne, Gayla, Denna, Cindy, Sarah. Somebody should know this. Oh my gosh, so welcome students and graduates. Glad you're here. And if you don't get this, bad. I'm going to take your certificate back because this is sort of like beginning floral design. You should know this. It's got to be there. So get on it. Come on, people. I want to know this one. Quick, 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 quick. Now, some of you know that we have the Flower Lovers Club, and with the Flower Lovers Club, there's a whole library of elements and principles DV or videos, so you can watch online streaming of what the elements and principles are. So if you need to have a brush up on something, you can go to the Flower Lovers Club, check it out, and then you'll know that you can have one of the elements. I'm not going to give it to you because that would be bad. Michelle, what you got? We have a winner. Who's the winner? Julie Spear from the UK. She's the first one, although Teacher Beth came first, but she doesn't count. We can't count Teacher Beth. So Julie, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Good job for you. And Teacher Beth is mocking all the graduates for not being faster. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher Beth, you get them on it. Make sure they do it. You know, you can't be doing this. I'm going to turn this around so I can see where I'm putting this last one because I'm just a little bit blinded by being at reverse. There we go. Turn it back to you now. So going the lighter color underneath helps draw your eye in, creating depth in the design, makes it more interesting. So we've got monochromatic going on. If I wanted to go even taller, coming in with the Alstromeria would be pretty fabulous. Removing the leaves, because the leaves die before the flowers do. So if I remove those, it's going to look alive and fabulous far longer than it would otherwise. And I could bring it in nice and tall here, thinking about where I want it, and then bring it in. How's that look? Am I getting it close to the right spot, guys? I think. Can anybody see? I think. Maybe I'll turn it so I can double check. Oh, that's wrong. Somebody should have yelled saying, Leanne, no, that's wrong. Okay, so I'll get this back in here. You guys got to help me out. So come on, Tulip Tribe. If you're not out there going, Leanne, that's in the wrong spot, you know you're doing something wrong. Got to pay attention. There we go. Now we got it up nice and tall, coming up over the top, then doing one more. Now, if you haven't invited your friends to join us, do so because we're going to go to new school next and when we go to the new school we're going to go foam free so that we can try it with a little different technique we did old school did the foam did it updated a bit because we went to even numbers and some grouping and some shadowing but it's using some old school techniques so if you haven't tagged a friend or shared the video, do so, so that they join us as we go to new school. We'll go into foam free and explore design from that side. And then again, if you missed out the shout out, we had so many of you who joined us for flower school last week. And I hope more of you can join me this week. We've got so many fun things planned with summer school. I was looking through and gathering up containers, starting to place flower orders already, because school starts July 8th. Can you believe it? It's like, oh my gosh. And there's only four spots left. So if one of them is yours, grab it now. Make sure and save yourself a spot. We're ready for you. The city is going to be beautiful. It's in bloom. The temperature is going back down. It's hot today, but it's supposed to be cooler tomorrow, and it'll be back to normal. We just had this little oddity of weather that was like, oh, too much, way too much. Okay, guys, what well, else do we see? I don't know where this came from, but I kind of like it. You know, we're getting all of these comments about lime form and, you know, elements. Anyway, lime, lime form, texture, and eat cheesecake. <laughs> eat cheesecake? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I like ours, which is Flower Shop Tender Loving Care, FSTLC. So if you are in our classes, you know when it comes to learning your elements and principles, 
It's Flower Shop, Tender Loving Care, Form, Space, Texture, Line, and Color. And every single arrangement has those five elements in it, or it's wrong. Those are the only rules you really have to know. So old school, where it had to be an odd number, no. Old school, where you couldn't mix tropical flowers with garden flowers, wrong. Old school, where you couldn't have lots of different textures, no. You can do new school, and the only rules you really have to worry about are your elements and principles. So some of you got the elements, form, space, texture, line, and color. Congratulations to Julie from the UK for getting that. So here I have form is vertical with a rectangle. I have space, you can see between each. Don't have a lot of texture going on right now. My texture is almost non-existent, so I need to add some texture. Line, got it. Color, monochromatic. So color, when you're monochromatic, I started with red, and it's tints, tones, and shades of the red. So any one color, tints, tones, and shades, gives you a monochromatic color harmony. If you think back to English, when you had to study root words and prefixes and suffixes and all of that, mono meaning one, chroma meaning color, so monochromatic is one color, and then we expand it to tints, tones, and shades of the same color. So there's your next question. Okay, who gets the prize on this one? What is a tone? So the first person, so Carolyn and Michelle, let me know who the first person is that gets tone. We'll do some prizes here. Let's, we gotta, we, we gotta figure out some prizes for these things. Wouldn't it be fun? We need prizes. Can we do prizes? David, do you get mad if I do prizes? No, but let's do it next week. Okay. Oh, I think I'm gonna do a prize. So Julie got a prize this time. Okay, Julie, I'll figure out what your prize is. You need a prize because you were first. So who's gonna get the prize for tone? We don't know what the prizes are, guys. We didn't plan this, but you know what? That's what's cool about live. Leanne just makes up her own rules, and then it's kind of cool, don't you think? Kind of fun. Okay, we need to add some texture here. While you guys figure out who's gonna be a tone prize winner. So, Leanne, here's a, a question. Uh, comes from Abel, who I think is testing this year. He's wondering, uh, do the flowers in your red arrangement have to be stripped, such as the roses devoid of greenery and foliage. Any thoughts on that? Okay, so whether or not you remove the thorns, the leaves, and all the extra stuff, optional. Um, as I worked this time, I did remove some of my leaves, but not all. David, what have you got there? Okay, so you've got some answers coming into tone very quickly, as a matter of fact. Robert says, tone, pure color that has gray. Cindy. Robert wins then. Is he the, the first one in? Gray, and then Deanna came in very quickly after that, and Lauren and Laurie, and they're still coming in. Okay, so Robert was first. So, you know, that's kind of not fair because if your internet is faster or slower, it can make that messed up. So we may have to rethink some of this. But Robert, uh, you get a prize. So tone is a color plus gray. So you take any hue and add gray and it becomes a tone. The way, way I remember that is that um, tint has an I, so it's a color plus white. Shade has an A, so it's color plus black. And tone doesn't have anything. But when your mom yelled at you, tone it down in there, she didn't mean to say stop, she just mean to mute it. So when you add gray, you mute it, you tone it down. So good job, Robert. So somebody's keeping track of these prizes, right? Okay, because that's my other problem is I say I'm gonna do it and then I forget. So somebody keeps track of that. Robert, Julie, we know. Okay, so texture. Texture could come a couple of different ways. I've got Dusty Miller which gives a nice texture, but it's going to dehydrate and it's not going to hold real well. See how it's already a little bit limp? Or I could do Green Trick Dianthus, because that gives me a nice texture in there. Which would you rather? No prize for this, just a question. Do you want Dusty Miller or do you want Green Trick? While you guys are answering that, I will tell you that you need to be on our newsletter mailing list if you're not already because coming up on our Tulip Tuesdays with tips for the Tulip Tribe, 
We have tips for Dusty Miller coming up and it will show you how to make it fabulous all the time so that you don't have to worry about it. And no, I'm not going to show you now. Huh. You have to wait for Tulip Tuesday. But we did film it. It's in edit. I think Caledonia has it right now. And you would get it on Tuesday, not, I don't know what Tuesday, but on a Tuesday. But you have to subscribe to the newsletter. So Caledonia and Susie, if you'll make sure that the link is in there so that they can get the newsletter, that'd be great. So am I doing Dusty Miller or Green Trick? Do we know? Uh, so far, Green Trick's in the lead. Okay, Green Trick it is. Dusty Miller goes by. You're getting, you're getting Dusty Miller on YouTube. <laughs> oh, no! Okay, so YouTubers will do Dusty Miller in the next arrangement, okay? We'll do Green Trick in this one. So all I need to do is get some texture in here. And Green Trick, I just love it. I have some Green Trick in my kitchen right now. It's just a vase of nothing but Green Trick that's sitting on my kitchen counter. And every time I just go to do something, I just go and touch it. And it just makes me feel good. It just... You know, I live in the city. We don't have grass. We don't have, you know, you can't go rub your feet in the grass. And so I put it on my table and I can just touch it and it makes me feel like I'm out in the country again. So let's just add this in then, get some texture in here. While I'm doing texture, what else is going on out there? Whoops, broke one. Do you know what kind of Dusty Miller that was? Um, Penny uh, Smith said she doesn't usually find it with the split leaves. Um, no, I do not know what kind of Dusty Miller it is. So if anybody is a gardener that has more knowledge than I do, do you know what variety of Dusty Miller this is? I know that it was grown in Mexico and trucked in to Oregon. So I know it's a Mexican import. Uh, and other than that, I don't know what variety. So if one of you people are a fabulous farmer that knows these things, type in the name for us all so that we can have that. Because I know somebody out there will know. You guys are always good. You answer all the questions. You get it right. So, okay, now I just added a little bit of texture in there. So now I have form, space, texture, line, and color. I've got all the elements. We're not going to talk about principles yet till I do the next design. So we've got old school with all the elements in there. David, what else is going on? Make sure to tell people to share this. Have you shared this? Okay, guys, have you shared this yet? You heard from David. Make sure you share this. If you haven't, then you're not my friend. No. <laughs> but please, share it, tag a friend, spread the word, let people know we're going to new school with a foam-free design now. We teach both of these in the classroom. If you study with us, we do old school, new school. We do it all because you need to be able to do classic design and you also want to be able to do innovative, fresh, and different design. You want to do a little bit of everything. So do a share real quick, then we'll get started on new school with a foam-free design. And we'll be talking about the principles of floral design. So do you like classic? If you like it, give us some love. Let us know. If you didn't like it, don't tell me. I don't want to know that. And I'm going to grab some curly willow back here. So curly willow is how I'm going to work with my foam-free design because I want to do a little bit of an armature. I need something to support my flowers, but I don't want to use foam, don't want to use tape. So while I'm pulling out this, Carolyn, Michelle, anything going on? Yes, Alexander on YouTube said that he grows that Dusty Miller, and it's called Senecio Cenaria or Cirrus. Okay, so Alexander, is that his name, Alexander? Yeah. Vendicia Sonaros or Cirrus. So, um, will somebody move that to you from YouTube to Facebook so that they can have that? So somebody capture that word and type it in there at some point so that it can get moved over so that the Facebook people can see that too. We love being on both, but the challenge is you guys don't get to see both unless you have two phones going on or two computers going on. The exciting thing about doing it on YouTube, if you haven't tried this yet, you'll have to. Uh, and we learned this from, I think it was Janet who shared this with me. If you watch it on YouTube, she's able to stream it into her TV 
and watch it on the big screen while she's having dinner. How cool is that? So she's back in the East Coast, so different time zone. She makes dinner and she and her husband watch it on TV while they're having dinner and I get to have dinner with them. How cool is that? Well, the thing is, I'm drinking coffee while they're drinking wine. I'm not sure that's fair. Maybe I should start doing wine in my cup, but that's probably not a good idea. No. no. <laughs> I guess I'm outvoted on that one. We so, have enough trouble controlling you. <laughs> so what I'm doing for my new school is taking some willow and just winding it down on itself. And then there's so many different ways that you could deal with this. You could do it with bind wire. You could do it with tape. It doesn't really matter, but you just kind of wind it. See how I'm making it just almost messy, to be perfectly honest. That one popped out, popping back down. Yeah. And I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to just take a little bit of tape. Just binding tape, waterproof tape. Davy tape is the old name for it. If you were a florist back in the day, Davy tape was the brand that everybody used. I don't know if Davy tape even exists any longer, but that was the brand we used to use. So you would say, instead of saying waterproof tape, you would say, could you hand me the Davy tape? Now, I think with many of the young florists, they probably don't even know what Davy tape is because I, I've not seen it for a long time. So it might not exist. So what I've done is just take that and secured it. If you saw our video on Monday, we did a natural armature bridable case. So doing this same technique and did it as a bridable case. If you didn't get that, you can find it on our YouTube channel and you can also find it in the video resource library on the website. So you can just go to flowerschool.com and you'll find it. So then I'm just cutting this down now. Okay. And then I can set that right into the vase and it gives me the ability to control where my flowers go or I could use it as a hand tie. And I could go back and tie some together because it's very pliable. If yours isn't pliable, then you can't really knot it like this because it'll just break. But if yours is pliable, you can tie it into a knot, hold it in place. It's kind of fun. Decide if you want it to come out like that or if you want to bring it back in. I'm going to leave it out. I kind of like that movement because even just the willow by itself starts looking kind of cool. Don't you think? Do you like it? I do. I, it makes me happy just to see the willow kind of coming out. If I wanted to do a longer piece, I could go back and add it in. Dennis said her mom called it Myers tape. I wonder if that was a different brand. Miner's tape. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, it's so fun to see over the years how the world evolves. And if you were a florist back in the day, the terminology you used was a little different than the terminology we use now. But yet, we were all doing the same thing. We poke flowers. And you just change with the trends and the styles. But the elements and principles don't change. Okay, so we're going to do a third prize. We have Julie and we have Robert. Okay, now this one, this is going to be a trick question because if you are a previous student, you think that there are, let me think here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you think there are six <coughs> principles, but we're going to do the new principles, which there are seven now. So if you learned in the old before we added the seventh, sorry, you won't have the right answer. Because now there are seven principles. We've changed it up because we matched ours to the American Institute of Floral Design so that students that were going on to the, do their testing, they would be ready for that. So um, first one to get the seven principles. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Karen said, back in the day, oh my, you're making me feel so old. You and I both, Karen, I know. I, I know. Yep. <laughs> 
Wendy Waterhouse logged in with the first one. Wendy, see, I told you that someday your day would be happening because Wendy just signed up for Advanced and she missed the two hour special that we did last week. And she was like, oh, I missed the two hours. Can I have it? And I had to say no because we said it was just two hours and it broke my heart. So I thought, oh, poor Wendy, I want to do it. And I had to say no. But I said, you know what? You pay attention because there will be more prizes, more things, more special deals. So Wendy, congratulations, you're the winner on the principles. So the principles, for those of you that are just tuning in, the um, little mnemonic to help you remember is cherubs, contrast, harmony, emphasis, rhythm, unity, balance, and scale. So seven, and every single design has those, just like they have the elements and principles. So now, thanks to YouTube, we'll bring in some of the Dusty Miller, because you asked, so we'll get that in there. Going to cut it down a little bit. I don't want it to be quite so big. So we'll have some texture from the Dusty Miller. If you get our newsletter, in a couple of weeks, you'll see a tip for using Dusty Miller. Actually, we filmed two tips for Dusty Miller so that it always looks fabulous and you can use it in your designs. If you don't get our email newsletter, you better sign up for it because you're gonna want that. I know you are. So then, I'm gonna take this back out and do this design as a hand tie in the armature. It could be done just as a vase, but I'm gonna do it as a hand tie just because. And I just slide things down. Then while I'm working, anything else going on out there? A uh, question came in on Messenger. You talked about how many spaces were left for July. How many are left in the online class? Ah, okay, so that's true. Because when I talk about spacing, uh, I do talk about specific classes. And so in the July 8th class here in Portland, Oregon, we take 12 students at a time, maximum, never more than 12. And so there's four spots left in that particular class. In the online, we are in open registration right now. And it's a perfect time to register for online because you can use flowers from your garden. You can use flowers from your neighbor's garden. You can just steal flowers from anywhere. Well, maybe you shouldn't steal them. But you can harvest and forage and save quite a bit of money just by gathering flowers during the season. So back to the question of online, yes, there's space and you can register for online right now. It is open. If you register for online, you start instantly. You don't even have to wait till July 8th. So we can get you set up and in. I know Therese, when she registered two weeks ago, she was surprised, like, oh, I'm already in. But, we, but she's still waiting, I think, one more week before she starts because she wants to use flowers from her own garden. And that way, she doesn't have to spend more money on the florals. So it's a great opportunity. So I've got two doing an even number. And I love that. You know, it doesn't matter that it's an even number. You can do that. Then, just because it makes it more interesting, rather than sticking monochromatic, let's go to complementary. So complementary is two colors directly opposite on the color wheel. So thinking back to your elements and principles, and color is one of the elements, and bringing it in, and notice how I'm just weaving it into my armature and adding that down low. And by doing green and red together, it's a complementary color harmony. So if you take the color wheel and you look at the red, you can see directly opposite is the green. So anytime you have a color and then you go opposite, it's a complementary harmony. So our most common complementary that you see all the time is red and green at Christmas time. Think about it, how much red and green do you see? If you're in Portland, you see a ton of red and green because of all the plaids that come out with the red and green in it. And then if you do blue, green, and yellow, green, it would be a split complement because you're taking a color plus jumping across the wheel. And then instead of taking the key color, you do the splits. And there's so much lumberjack plaid here in Portland, Oregon. You see a ton of that because we've got the, what do they call them? The, not the metrosexual, the lumbersexual, I don't know, but the lumberjacks in Portland wearing their plaid. It's pretty much funny. So. 
We've had, in fact, we just had a whole party. Carolyn, you were at the party. Did you wear plaid? Yes, you I did wore wear plaid. plaid. Yes, I did. So the whole Rose Festival had an opening night private preview party, and the theme was plaid. So those of you that are professional florists, don't you love it when somebody calls you up and says, my theme is plaid? What kind of a theme is plaid? I mean, plaid is a pattern, not a theme. But that was their theme, plaid. So I thought that was pretty funny. So. Bringing in a second one. So again, going with twos just to mess with your mind a little bit because it doesn't have to be an odd number. Old school, new school, then coming in with some of the texture with the Dusty Miller, tucking it down low and weaving it inside so that as it starts to fade, it will still look good. That's one of the tricks to doing good Dusty Miller is to just keep it low, close to the water source and tightly packed in because then as it does go limp, it still looks sort of alive. You can even take another leaf and put it with it to help support it. So bring in a little bit of Ruscus. And maybe a little more Ruscus. What else is going on out there as I'm sitting here poking flowers? You guys got to be talking, you know, the tribe, speak up. What do you want to know? We're ready for your questions. There was a question on what variety of roses you're working with today. And I actually know that one. Sometimes I don't know. Um, this variety is called Freedom. Freedom roses are a staple in our industry. They're super long lasting and they reliably open. So you can get them in as a bud and they'll stay beautiful as a bud for several days. And then as they open, they open into a lovely cup with a pretty high petal count and look voluptuous, but they don't go so big that they just reflex and fall apart because they're grown for that longevity. Unfortunately, there's no fragrance to them. They don't have any, any fragrance at all. They just are there. But that's one of the reasons that they last so long. Those of you that have been in school know that fragrance shortens the life of a flower. What else you got going on? Well, Cindy's asking the tribe if anyone grows Ruscus in their garden. Oh, I know Ruscus grows in Florida. I don't know of people who grow it in their garden. What a great question. So Cindy wants to know, YouTube and Facebook, do any of you grow Ruscus? And then I guess my question would be, do you grow Israeli Ruscus or Italian Ruscus? Both will grow in Florida, I do know that, because we have friends that have ferneries and they grow it there, so it does exist. Carolyn, what have you got? Yeah, Marvac is um, starting to grow uh, Dusty Miller so she can harvest it in the fall. And then Charisse from Sweden is waiting for her Astilbe hydrangea and Alstroemeria to come up. Oh, I love a still be in the garden. I hate a still be in arrangements because I always have trouble keeping it alive. Did anybody have a trick for how to keep a still be alive? I quick dip it, I pray, I go, oh my gosh. And sometimes I purposely will use it upside down so that it looks like it's alive even though it's actually dead. Have you ever done that? Oh my gosh, how bad is that? But it just always looks sad to me, but it's such a pretty, pretty flower. So maybe harvested from the garden where it doesn't go through water deprivation, it might actually hold a little better. Who knows? So Marmac's got a garden. She, you're in Toronto. Therese in Sweden with a garden. Who else was it with a garden? Or did I, was that it? That was it. Oh, that was too. it. Okay, cool. Bringing in my carnations now. So you can see I'm using the same types of flowers that I used, except instead of going to the Alstroemeria, I went to the Hydrangea, and instead of the Green Trick, going into some of the Dusty Miller, because the YouTube clan asked for that, and it's all coming together in a foam pre-design. And we've got about 15 minutes left. I've got some more things to bring out and work with, but my question to you, have you shared this? Have you tagged a friend? Have you signed up for the newsletter? Have you signed up for flower school? We said we were going to talk about old school, new school, no school, and no school. Sorry, doesn't work. Old school can be classic and fabulous. 
and then new school we'll put together next. So if you haven't shared, go ahead and do so. I'll go ahead and get this put together. What else is going on out there? You know, I really like your discussion about new school and old school, but I want to point out something. The new school is actually the old school because there was a time when we did organic armatures for all of our arrangements, and isn't it interesting that that's the most biodegradable product you could possibly use? You know, David just brought up, if you didn't hear him, that what's old is new again, and it does make us laugh because new school, which is foam-free design, is exactly what we did back in the day because we didn't have foam. So using an organic armature like this was what you did. Or if you didn't do this, you might do a moss pack. I'm sure I cut that short enough, maybe a little bit shorter. A moss pack or a needle pack. Some of you may be old enough to remember needle packs and moss packs. And so this whole eco-conscious design trend is nothing more than going back to what we did before the foam existed. Now, I feel fortunate that we have foam because it gives us the ability to do both, but you want to make sure that you can master using anything because it all depends on what style that you want to create, what image you want to project, and then your personal values as far as the eco-conscious or not, and whether or not it's biodegradable and all of that. So you can see here, there would be new school, okay? Spin that around. Here's old school, but yet they're both current school because both of them would fill a purpose, make a customer happy. Both of them fulfill a need, and you've got to master both. Once you do flower school, you'll learn foam, you'll, lose, you'll learn alternative mechanics, you'll learn your elements and principles, You'll learn how to create interest. You'll learn that you don't need the rules of must have an odd number. You don't have to be two and a half times the container. You don't have to do this. You do have to have your artistic concepts. But how cool is that? Because then, as long as you've got artistic concepts, you can get as creative as you want to. You don't have to worry about Oh, it's supposed to be this way. Oh, it's supposed to be that way. It doesn't matter. Now, where should I position these so that they show? What should I be doing? Where should I move them? Do they show pretty good, guys? They show very nicely on screen. Cool. Okay, no prize, but which one do you like the best? The natural armature or the foam? Just curious. I would just like to know that. Find out from you. Then I'm going to do another little one just because... You may have seen on Facebook, I think is where I saw it, or maybe I saw it on Instagram, where the little tiny baby bouquets are becoming so popular, which talk about old school. It's a tussy mussy. So it's the same thing that was done back in the Victorian era, but now it's coming back in style and it's on trend again. If you were part of the Victorian era, you might actually have used a tussy mussy holder. Now, I don't know, I see you've got the camera there. Maybe we can get a close up on that. This one was actually gifted to me by James Moritz, who you had. Want a close up now. Okay, cool. Does it show well? Mm -hmm. It has this little pin. Everybody can see that. So you'd put the flowers down inside the hole, and then you'd take the pin and feed it through, finding a hole to do that. There we go and it locks the flowers in place because it just pins into the stem. And that way, if you set it down like that, it wouldn't fall out because they're pinned in. And James asked me to do some videos with Tussie Mussies, and I created several different ones, and then he gifted this one to me. And uh, I believe his Tussie Mussy holders now are in the Smithsonian Institution, I believe. I don't know, he had the largest collection in the world. And he was right here in Chicago. He owned the Chicago Floral Art School. Uh, and so I was very honored to get to work with his product. But the new school now is to create these little tiny, tiny baby bouquets that are old school. How fun is that? You know, everything 
just keeps coming around. So for that, I chose to pick some little tiny spray roses, little guys, then cleaning them off, carefully removing the lower leaves and the thorns, but I don't want to scar them, so I just use the rose glove. That's the best way to do that. That way you don't have any damage. Leanne, what's the rose glove? That's a big hot question that just popped in. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, it's so funny because I just grab them. They are the best thing ever. Um, rose gloves, Caledonia, Susie, if you could put the link in there. We could buy them by the gross because they're a heavy duty rubber coated glove so no thorns can go through. Your hand is protected. You don't have to worry about being poked. And if you were trained like me back in the day, you used your knife like this and you would take the thorns off, but that hurts the flower. It shortens the life. So you don't want to do that. Better to use the glove because it doesn't do any damage, no damage whatsoever, and you just kind of run them down. Now we carry them in three different sizes. This is a size nine, which is the middle size. They come in eight, nine, and 10. I like to go a bigger size. I mean, that's way bigger than my hand. As you can see, you know, it's a lot bigger than my hand. But by doing bigger than your hand, you can put them on and off even when your hand is wet and you don't have to worry about it. So it's really good. And they're kind of squeaky. Can you hear that? Anyway, they just take the thorns off and clean it all up. So it makes it easy. Some people use them for um, anything that's got thorns on it. I'm gonna steal, well, no, I should leave my no school together. I'll go back here and steal from here. Some Alstroemeria would be very, very pretty in this as well, but I need to pull it down. While I do this, Carolyn, do you have anything yeah, there from Marmack. YouTube? Marmac is saying that um, in Canada they're called petite bouquets and they're all the rage. That, that's right. Petite bouquet is the name that I have heard too. And everybody's wanting them. And I think, in fact, we're doing some filming tomorrow, getting ready with some smaller arrangements. I think it's the answer to our civilization right now. Because think about how many city dwellers are living in very, very, very small apartments. Here in Portland, they call them micro apartments, and it can be 150 square feet to 350 square feet. Can you imagine an entire apartment that is 150 to 350 square feet? They're micro units. Sometimes they have community kitchens and some shared areas, but basically you have a place to put a bed. And so for those, the petite bouquets are really important because you can't put a big bouquet. There's just not enough room. So the petite becomes very, very important and a good seller. So it's interesting. So Marmac's in Toronto, which would be a city. And I bet you, Marmac, do you guys have the micro apartments there? I bet you do. Because I know um, David actually lived in Toronto for a period of time. And the apartments were small then, and that was years ago, so interesting. But yeah, the petite bouquets, so you just grab little things, then cutting off the side shoots, because you don't want the side shoots. Save those to do corsage work, or even smaller bouquets. You could do little tiny, tiny, tiny baby bouquets with those. So I'm cleaning it up. There we go. So We've, with your informal poll, the natural look is ahead, at least on Facebook. Okay, so <laughs> Facebook is going for the natural look. And it's 100% of the vote on YouTube. On YouTube there too. Okay, well guys, I'm glad you like that. Too fun. Then once I get my materials ready, I go back to foliage, and Galix would be nice because it's a nice petite foliage. Gathering that together. So we've got about five minutes, people. So if you have any specific questions that you want answered, now's your chance. Get it typed in there. Michelle? Christine had one uh, a couple minutes back. She wondered if there was an option for eucalyptus. She's allergic to it. Ah, uh, you know, 
That's a great question. It was at Christine. Uh -huh. So Christine, good question. There's always options because allergies are a big deal. Personally, I'm allergic to gardenias and baby's breath. So I have to be really careful and have great ventilation and just be around it for a little while. Many people have an allergic reaction to Alstroemeria. Alstroemeria gives off a little sap and that sap can cause contact dermatitis, which means you get kind of red and rashy. It's not deadly, but it's unsightly and uncomfortable. It itches. So you want to be a little cautious. With the eucalyptus, you just want to look towards drapey, flowing things. It's not gonna be the same, but drapey and flowing. So plumosa, Italian ruscus, those would be two things that might work. Grevillea, but if you're allergic to eucalyptus, you're probably allergic to grevillea as well. Grevillea gets me, it makes me itch like mad. I can just not even deal with it. Um, so good questions. In class, when we have things that you're allergic to, I just tell you, please don't use that. And if you're studying at home, uh, we work with you as to how to do different substitutions so that you can create the design, but you do it with things that don't hurt you physically because there's no reason whatsoever to use something that's going to make you sick or uncomfortable. There's too many beautiful, beautiful flowers out there, so there's no reason to hurt yourself. Isn't that fun how it's coming together in the petite bouquet? Let me add a little bit more, keeping it, I'm going to cut this one down. There's too many of these. It's not going to be petite if I put all these in. So I'm going to prune it back and then stick it in there. There we go. And then as I get this going, it's vitally important that everything have its own specific place. So I think about how it's fitting together in my hand. So we've got that on a close-up, so don't move too far. Okay, does that show pretty good there? Beautiful. Okay, so you can see how I've just clustered together super, super tightly, giving it that very, very sweet, tussy, mussy look. In our advanced class, we talk about the heritage floral design, and Tussie Mussie is one of the heritage designs that's coming back in style. When, um, would it be Megan and Harry, when they got married in London, Megan had a Tussie Mussie style bouquet, but it was all wired and taped, but it was very tightly compacted like this. And it's definitely coming back in style to do this. Then I'm going to need to cut the stems down, because right? I certainly don't need all those stems. And when you look at it, you can see that this, everything below my hand is kept bare. There's no leaves of any sort. And then all of the decor is above my hand. Then I need to tie that off, which I could use twine, I could use raffia, just to show you something different, you could even use like a pipe cleaner. Doesn't really matter what you bind it with. And when you take class with us, we show you lots of different binding techniques, but I'm gonna do a pipe cleaner this time just because I usually don't. And that way you can see something different. While I'm finishing this off, any other thoughts, questions? Yeah, um, Haley had a question about storing flowers in the cooler. Just plain water, or should I use a flower food additive? Okay, Haley, good question. That would be a no school question, and that's a great question, because once you come to flower school, you learn that flowers will do so much better if you have flower food. We use a variety of different non-toxic chemicals. We don't do anything with toxicity, but flower food, you could put it in your coffee by accident and drink it, it's not going to hurt you. It has um, three ingredients. It has a food, a nutrient, a sugar, and then it has an antibacterial biocide, and then it has a wetting agent, which lowers the pH of the water that makes it drink faster. So by using flower food with your fresh flowers, you're giving them the nutrition, plus keeping the water clean, plus making them drink faster. And then once we do them with the flower food, 
once we design and we're getting ready to send them out like this, we spray them down with an anti-transparent. And the anti-transparent locks that moisture in so it doesn't evaporate, so it keeps them alive longer. So I've got a little petite bouquet. Now I don't want this to show because that's not very attractive. So what I'll do, I'm going to cut this down a little bit more. And I don't know, Jeff, if you can get that on camera or not. I'll set it there, and we'll see if it goes on camera. If not, guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab one more item. It's on camera. It's on camera. Cool. You know, you put the whole team to work, and things just, it just works. We are so lucky. If we didn't have the entire tribe here at any given time, we couldn't do as much for you. A U-glue strip, and if I take my scissor, and I get it wet first, okay? So I use wet scissors, then I can cut it, and it won't stick to my scissors. So there's a little tip for you, is just get your scissors wet. Then using just a strip of U-glue, so I'm just pulling this off. I'm gonna wrap that around the chenille stem that I used. Connecting it to myself, that's really special. It's sticking to everything else. There we go. Then once I get that all around that, I can take a piece of lily grass. Okay. Just a little bit of lily grass. And as we're finishing up, I'll go ahead and secure this. So a last shout out to each of you. Thank you for coming. It's been an hour. Isn't it amazing how quickly an hour goes? The time just flies by. Thank you, Caledonia. Thank you, Susie, for keeping everybody going. Michelle and Carolyn for being my voice and eyes in here so that I know what's going on. David and Jeff for keeping us on with the technology. And then we have special guests in the studio today, which that you guys know that you're always welcome to come visit. Today, we've got Debbie and Ryan here. They just moved to Portland, Oregon, brand new. They've been here since Saturday, I guess. No, Sunday. When did you get here? Saturday. Saturday. So it's like brand new babies in the city, which is pretty exciting. And they came to see what's going on here at the Floral Design Institute, just like you did. So now I've got wrapped so you can see that my mechanics are covered my petite bouquet. So three things we shared today. Again, thank you to everyone. So this one seemed to be the favorite, the little wilder with the no foam natural mechanics. Then we did a petite bouquet and then the classic with foam. And then the no school, which is pretty disgusting because that kind of shows you why you need to come to flower school and learn how to do all of these things and join us here at the Floral Design Institute and do something you love. So we'll get the prizes together for Robert and Julie and Wendy. Wendy. So Wendy, I'm so glad you were joining us. I feel better. Julie, good job. Robert, good job. See you all next week live at 3 o'clock. Make sure you share, tell your friends, and see what weird, crazy thing we do next week. See you next time. Get out there and do something you love.